are these people? Shout out to personalities who talked about this. I do want to kind of mention this because I think it's very significant, especially in light of recent events while I've been away. Obviously, we know now that Kamala is basically coordinated in as the next president uh, to replace Biden. We know as of yesterday that she enlisted Tim Waltz, um, who is governor of Minnesota, to become her running mate. Um, it to that's the team to go up against Trump and Vance. Um, I'm sure many of you know the look, and I'm going to be extremely fair. Um, Waltz has done some nice things for Minnesota, but I'll even with that, I would argue that those things shouldn't be considered progressive in my opinion. That should be standard. Yeah. So that's just my take, but whatever. He has done some nice things, but he's also done some terrible things, uh, most importantly being a Zionist shell. Um, so, but along with that, um, while people have been ooing and eyeing, not you guys necessarily, but many of your neighbors and family and friends are ooing and eyeing over the two new shiny coins that Harrison Waltz uh heading into the convention in two weeks from now jesus christ is in two weeks um biden has i would argue quietly deployed uh our marines to head to the middle east to counter as defense uh against the imminent i would say retaliation from possibly iran more mm -hmm. than likely Hezbollah. Um, so we know that Israel started that mess in part by assassinating uh, the Hamas, um, negoci the Hamas main the Hamas negotiator um, a couple of weeks ago. So now, you know, things are looking to be fucked up for Israel. So we are going to be like, well, we're the bitches, so we're going to send our troops over there. So as I said, I think this will be very significant, I'll, but I'll probably I'll talk more about that later. Um, but to begin, let's unfortunately we have to do this because I want to be very careful in videos that we show uh, right now. I think this is CNN. So don't want to say shout out to CNN, but shout out to CNN. No, I want to give you guys credit. In, it's NNC. I know. Colin. I know. NNC. Right. It's NNC. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, so CNN did report on this. So we're going to listen to about half of this as it pertains to this deployment, and we'll continue with the segment. The U.S. is preparing to send fresh military assets to the Middle East, including a carrier strike group and a fighter squadron. It is bracing for a further escalation of hostility, hostilities as Iran vows retaliation for the killing of a senior Hamas leader in Tehran earlier this week. It blames Israel for the attack. Israel has not commented publicly either way. New today, the U.S. Embassy in Beirut, Lebanon, is telling Americans who want to get out of the country to book any ticket available. It's also warning those who do not leave that they, quote, should not rely on the U.S. government for assisted departure or evacuation in a crisis. <laughs> I want to bring in now retired U.S. Army don't rely on us, but rely on us for the crisis we're bringing you, but not to help you. Don't do that. Right. Um, Major General Dana Pitard to talk more about this. Uh, General, I, I want to ask you to have a listen here to National Security Council spokesman John Kirby as he explains why exactly the U.S. is moving more resources into the region. We've heard the Supreme Leader loud and clear that he intends to uh, avenge this killing of, uh, of a Hamas leader in uh, Tehran uh, and that they want to conduct a, another attack on Israel. We, we can't just assume that uh, we aren't also potentially going to be victims of that kind of an attack. So we've got to make sure we've got the right resources and capabilities in the region. So are, are these capabilities, should we presume, the focus here is additional missile and drone defense, not just for Israeli targets, but also U.S. forces deployed in the region. Well, good afternoon, Jim. I think what uh, 
John Kirby said, and, and I know John Kirby, is, is that the U.S. military in America is just being prudent uh, by sending a, a stri strike carrier force there, the USS Lincoln a strike carrier group uh, there. But it's to protect American assets as well as to help defend Israel in case Iran decides to attack. And it does look like Iran is, is going to do something, just not sure what it is at this point. So Iran, a number of weeks ago, launched dozens of missiles and drones at Israel, what was then an unprecedented attack. The missile defenses, which, by the way, weren't just the U.S. and Israeli, uh, there were other partners, including Arab partners in the region. The missile defenses worked then. I imagine Iran will want to prove it could do better this time. So what might that kind of attack look like? Well, as you mentioned, in April, uh, nearly 300 uh, drones, missiles, and, uh, and, and other assets were fired at Israel, uh, and it utterly failed. Uh, so this time, Israel should anticipate failed. really a multi-directional uh, attack. It wasn't that they failed. Those were more warning shots. Yeah, anything, like, because... and they still hit targets. Like, right. What... But they were but they were strategic as far as trying well i think they very much mm -hmm. succeeded to not hit civilians but to hit you know mm -hmm. i don't want to say property but to fit, hit major infrastructure other things. and yeah right so that again it was just more of an idea of them saying don't mess with us because we can do a lot more damage mm -hmm. than this and even just talking to certain folks who are a little more aware of this issue, you know, Iran, because I basically said, well, Iran just let, let, it, let it rip. And people were like, no, they have to be very restrained because the optics of Iran, Iran rather, um, going ham on Israel, like that's not going to look good for them. So... Mm. Right now, they've been, if anything, Hezbollah has been the ones who have been like, let's go. And Iran has been like, no, we have to, like, they're put in a very awkward position here. Um, but you notice how they were calling out Hamas. They're saying Hamas leader. They didn't mention that Israel assassinated a Hamas negotiator which I think was not by accident, is to give the idea like, oh, we um, we got someone from Hamas, which, and I said this online maybe a few weeks ago, you know, so also oh, Israel is able to do uh, targeted attacks, right? So yeah. there is no reason for you to indiscriminately kill thousands of Palestinians in the guise of, oh, we got to, like, Hamas is in the hospital. Hamas is in the tunnels. Hamas is here. Hamas is there. Hamas is you know? all so around us. He's, they're within us all. Right. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, I just find it very interesting that they're kind of downplaying what Israel is doing here. And basically, it's the idea of, it's basically them saying, well, Israel has a right to retaliate and Iran basically cannot, which I think is bullshit. If Israel has the right to defend itself, so does every other country when they feel threatened. So yeah. again, I think Iran has been very restrained and the fact that they can and they haven't, I think has shown how restrained they've been uh, in order to prevent an escalation towards this um, assault. Yeah. You can go ahead which includes from, I mean, from Iran itself, as well as Hezbollah to the north, Houthis to the south, and even Gaza to an extent, um, which would try to overwhelm uh, the air defenses of Israel and Israel's uh, regional allies. So let me ask you this, because in the cycle of violence in the Middle East, and by the way, this has been going on for decades, if and when Iran carries out such an attack, Israel will then say it needs to respond to, to retain deterrence or reestablish deterrence and, and retaliate in some way. 
I, I just I, I'm trying to figure out how how we get out of this cycle. Well, I think it depends on how much damage <laughs> is done by Iran against Israel. If it isn't a whole lot of damage, uh, then that's where the U.S. Uh, uh, through diplomatic actions can talk to Israel and say, well, let's call it a day uh, so we can move on with the ceasefire in Gaza. Yeah. Uh, so I think it depends. It depends on um, the, the level of attack from Iran. What is the danger that the U.S. gets drawn in to this attack? I mean, it, it's going to participate, likely in some way, largely, if, if, if they can, right, in a defensive role, providing additional missile defense against and drone defense against any attack that would come from Iran and its proxies. But, I mean, there's a chance that U.S. forces are also hit there, as John Kirby was, was referring to, which, would then, which, which might then generate a U.S. response of its own. So the, so the risk for U.S. involvement, direct involvement, is quite high here, isn't it? There, there is risk uh, of Iran attacking U.S. forces, but that will be on Iran. Iran does not want to have a fight with both the United States and Israel. Iran wants to certainly save face because of the, uh, the assassination of Ismail Haniyeh on, on its soil. But what Iran does not want is a full-blown war. In a full-blown war, Iran loses. And perhaps loses its nuclear facilities, which it's highly invested in. Uh, but before we go, as, as we look at this situation, which is, which is again, uh, so familiar in, in the region, where is U.S. power at this point? Because there's been a lot of reporting, including by CNN, that the Biden administration has been constantly pushing, pressuring Israel to, to rein in some of its attacks, and yet these attacks continue and, and arguably get more aggressive. Is, is U.S influence, uh, not just in the region, but, but with Israel? Is it, is it declining? I, I wouldn't say the U.S. influence is declining. Uh, U.S. forces and the U.S. influence in the Middle East is, is greater than any other power uh, in the world. Uh, they're in the Don't Middle lie. Uh, but on it the is interesting that platform. Israel has sent these really three major assassinations. Yeah. Um, and that may be more on Prime Minister Netanyahu and his situation um, as far as politically in Israel uh, and how he remains in power himself as opposed to a waning of U.S. influence. Yeah, his own partner, former partner in the, in the war cabinet, Benny Gantz, has, has said quite similar. Major General Dana Petard, thanks so much. Thoughts, Reef? Uh, I mean, a couple of them. I don't know if you have what uh, Nuno talked about today, right? But no, I haven't. Um, but I might have been. I might have been someone else and not Nuno. But um, that recently we said that like we would defend any American um casualty, like by Iran or by Yemen or. You know, and then we just stuck our two big old aircraft carriers in their ocean, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So, methinks they're trying to big stick their way into this, but they might find out. Which, yeah, that's not good. You know, so, yeah, gonna be a fun so, time in we'll World War Three. Yeah, and we're going to get into why this will not be good. In I, I think the significance, I think especially given the election right now, later. Um, but shout out to Dave DeCamp. Um, so I'm going to read two articles from him because um, yeah. I think they very much align uh, with this segment. Uh, but he wrote last week, and we'll update this a little bit, um, where he writes, Biden tells Netanyahu the U.S. will defend Israel, pledges new military deployments, which we just heard in that CNN article. You forgot um, that man's still president, so, huh? Y'all forgot that man's still president. Just saying. Um, well, I know you got shiny new president lady president, but... <laughs> um, but anyway... Uh, President Biden spoke with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Thursday 
and promised the U.S. would help defend Israel from any reprisal attacks it may face from Iran or its allies in response to recent Israeli escalations. Iran is vowing revenge for the Israel assassination of Hamas's political chief in Tehran, and Hezbollah is warning it will escalate in response to Israeli strike in Beirut that killed one of its top commanders. The president reaffirmed his commitment to Israel's security against all threats from Iran, including its proxy terrorist groups Hamas, Hezbollah, and Houthis, the White House said in a readout of the Biden Netanyahu call. Biden also said the U.S. was deploying more military assets to the region. The president discussed efforts to support Israel's defense against threats, including against ballistic missiles and drones, to include new defense military deployments, the readout said. The White House said Vice President Kamala Harris was also on the call. So, so y'all are thinking that, oh, Kamala is going to be better on Israel than Biden? She hasn't said shit so far. But no. If anything, she that. just shouted down, like, protesters calling for yeah, she did. an end to the genocide. So, you know, right. not much is going to change. Um you know, nothing will fundamentally the, change, as they say. A, Pen a Pentagon official told the Washington Post that the U.S. had assembled 12 warships in the Middle East that were already in the region to prepare to defend Israel. The U aircraft carrier <laughs> USS Theodore Roosevelt and six U.S. Navy destroyers are in the Persian Gulf, while three amphibious ships and two destroyers are in the eastern Mediterranean. U.S. officials told Axios that the U.S. is preparing for a direct Iranian attack on Israel and believes it could be bigger than the April 13th missile and drone attack that came in response to the Israeli bomb of the Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria. The next attack could include Hezbollah and other Iranian allies. Biden, Harris, and other U.S. officials claim they're trying to reduce tensions but conditional U.S. military aid for Israel and vows to defend Israel no matter what it does in the region only emboldens Netanyahu and leads to more escalations. So, I mean, as we said, you know, like, this is kind of on par for the course of the Biden administration at this point. Like, people, like, have been screaming at him ad nauseum to call for a ceasefire, do not give weapons to Israel, you know, um, call for a ceasefire, and yet he still continues to bid the bidding of Yanyahu, and now Kamala is also doing that same bidding, and now that we are deploying uh, our military uh, into the region uh, to potentially now get into the middle of what has been an issue that Israel has started uh, because they're being fucking petty, essentially. Yep. Um, so uh, Dave continues, so this was the end of the first article, and you sent this to me yesterday as an update. So Dave actually tweeted, uh, does this matter to Genocide Joe or Kamala the Kid Killer? So he <laughs> writes in an article that he wrote, published yesterday, majority of, actually scroll up, majority of Americans oppose US, using U.S. troops to defend Israel. The Biden administration has committed to defending Israel from an expected Iranian reprisal attack. So, um, as you can imagine, the majority of Americans oppose the idea of U.S. troops being used to defend Israel if it comes under attack by Iran, according to a poll conducted by the Chicago Council of, on Global Affairs that was released yesterday. Okay. The majority... The poll, conducted from July 21st to July 1st, 2024, found that 56% of Americans oppose U.S. troops defending Israel, while 42% support the idea. Support for defending Israel is stronger among Republicans, with 53 in favor and only 32 of Democrats in favor. The survey also found that 55% of Americans oppose U.S. troops defending Israel if it comes under attack by an neighboring country. The results come in as the Biden administration is vowing to defend Israel from an expected Iranian reprisal attack for the killing of Hamas's political chief, Ismaili Haniyeh, in Tehran. 
A major coordinated attack launched by Iran and its allies could result in American casualties and the U.S. support for Israel risks a major regional war. The U.S. defended Israel from an Iranian attack in April, which came in response to Israeli bombing on the Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria. The Biden administration intervened directly to protect Israel and is pledging to do so again without any authorization from Congress or any debate on the matter. The Chicago Council showed the lowest level of support for defending Israel among Americans since the Chicago Council began asking the question in 2010. In 2015, 2018, and 2021, the majority of Americans, 53%, supported the idea. The Chicago Council attributed the lower level of American support for defending Israel to Israel's onslaught in Gaza. The unrelenting Israeli attacks against Gaza have likely dampened American willingness to defend Israel, especially among Democrats, mm. reads an article published on the Chicago Council website. So basically all it means is American and, and, human shields is what it sounds like coming. Yeah. You know? Which, and also... Um, Right now, Biden and Harris and Waltz have all declared their loyalty to Israel. And I've said this online many times. If American casualties come in, and they come mm -hmm. in hot through the fall, depending how much this assault escalates, people, on, people remember Iraq. Yeah. They're not going to be feeling this so right now that so really right now on this issue if the democrats not the De well if the republicans are smart they will hit come out with this issue because yeah. as as you said and as i saw earlier like they're doing a rally at least earlier today or right now and i guess protesters were yelling in regards to what's happening in israel and basically come out was like shut the fuck up yeah I'm speaking. Pretty much. You if know, you want Trump so... to win, don't let me speak, essentially. Okay. Right. Right. You know. Wherever it should be, I want to listen to you because I actually care about um, getting your vote. And so I will do what I need to do in order to ensure that American lives are not being dashed away on account of us protecting Israel. So really, if they were smart, Democrats, they should be thinking that way. Conversely, mm -hmm. if Republicans are smart, they should be hitting Kamala on that. Yeah. Um, but we'll see if evil party no, they, they won't. will do that. They won't. They're both bought by APAC they're and J Street and everything. They're They're all bought. So that ain't happening. If anything, it will be performative in measure and mean nothing, you know? So, good luck with that, you know? But, yeah, sounds like we might be losing some American troops as boots on the ground soon. So, Probably. hopefully not. Uh, but... I, I, I don't, I, I, hopefully not, but it's looking that way right now. Yeah. And it's sad that people are not mentioning this. It's sad that not a lot of people have talked about this deployment. Well, it also and look it, how. Go ahead. It also pushes people to like hate the region more. Really, like I, I still have people who because they're they lost friends in Afghanistan and Iraq that all brown people from there are bad. You know. Right. Like when the person who was over there who died probably wouldn't agree with you. You know. Like, you know, who probably lost his life defending large swaths of them. So, you know, I just find it funny that that's people wrap themselves up in the red, white, and blue with that, and and all, and all, and all, and all peaches and rainbows, you know. So, right. But yeah, that's that's the only thing I'm so, worried about is that it emboldens the same thing that's being emboldened in the UK right now. So, right. you know, like, it's it's the other. That's who we're fighting. We're fighting yeah. the other. And, you know, just do what we say. 
So, right. I don't know. And some of you watched the debate, not debate, the panel that I did on Savvy Show last week. And this was what I was trying to explain to Dana, the Republican um, sure. representative on the panel. Like, you care about immigration, right? But when we're bombing these countries, you know, with our policy, and in this case, in light of Israel, yeah, where are those where are those refugees going to go? Where are those people going to go? You know, like um, they're already starting to do that in Lebanon. That they're basically saying for people to leave, evacuate. So where are they going to go? They're going to come to Europe, and they're mm -hmm. going to come here, and they're yeah. going to. As you say, take your jobs and you get jobs. mad at them. <laughs> right. You get mad at them for, and look, I understand why you get mad at them, but you're getting mad at the wrong entity. You should yeah. be getting mad at the administration and the bureaucracy and the military industrial complex mm -hmm. that is causing this to happen, that is forcing people to leave because of the destruction that we're laying in their countries. And they have no choice but to come to Europe or America in order to seek refuge. But you're going to yell at them because they're taking your houses and jobs. And granted, the government shouldn't be necessarily giving these amenities just for nothing um, on account for our tax dollars. I totally understand that. But you have to look from a broader brush in terms of seeing what's happening globally to make the connection, oh, this is not necessarily their fault. And I'm not saying that all immigrants are here for, you know, like nefarious reasons. Like there are definitely plenty of those immigrants that are here. But I'm talking about when it comes to war that we're, that they're wanting to, that they're feeling the need to come here in order to be safe. Yeah. And you're getting mad at those immigrants for essentially having to leave from a place caused by our foreign policy. As we say, it's all connected. You can't just look at domestic policy in isolation and not think about how foreign policy might be affecting uh, some of the issues that is driving a lot of the, uh, the domestic issues that we care, you claim to care about. Right. Yep. Well, talking about these things is why we're demonetized. So you can go to codashv.com slash indie news network, scan that QR code on your screen. If you're in the live chat with us, you put exclamation mark donate. Links are in the description as always, but you know, we appreciate all the financials you can help give us. And if you can't, you know, just like and subscribe. It's very easy. Share the stream, leave a comment, all the stuff every other YouTuber asks you to do. You do it for them, you don't do it for us? What what's going on here? Huh? Don't me. I'm looking at you. Don't make me. Don't make me press those buttons. 